Good morning, everyone. Thank you for being here as we remember Monsignor Murphy, our friend and um, pastor. I I'd like to call your attention to a little video we have that we want to share with you. Some of you might have seen it before. You may remember it when Monsignor retired. The church put together this video to say farewell. So it's fitting um, that in, at his memorial mass, we also play it to say farewell. Immediately after the video, there's a beautiful song that Monsignor also loved very much by Enya um, called Pilgrim. You may re also remember that his homily was based on that song. So we will play that song for him as well. Thank you for being here. Please use the booklet that you've received to sing with us. As you know, Monsignor was a priest, and as priest, he loved to hear you sing. So sing and fully participate in the liturgy. Thank you again for being here, and welcome.
Thought I'd wake you up before I. Started. Um, I, I just wanted to say a couple of thank yous. Uh, first, uh, thank you to the parish um, and to the pastor who arranged uh, for us to be here today. Uh, thank you uh, for the people who came. I know many of you uh, remember Joe from when he was pastor here, and he would really appreciate you coming here. I'd like to also say a very special thanks to the Bolger family who have been absolutely instrumental in arranging everything today and far more. Uh, Joe depended on Bobby uh, like his right hand when he was pastor and the family has continued that tradition in helping our family and I just think it's, a, it's wonderful that uh, he worked with such generous and giving people. Um, and before I let my father say uh, the real words, I just wanted to say I'm Tom Murphy, Joe's nephew uh, he was Uncle Joe to me. Uh, he was Father Joe, Monsignor Murphy, uh, Roro. Uh, he was a friend, a brother, and obviously a beloved uncle. And most of all, he was a priest. Uh, and there are very few people who really live their lives in a way that fulfill the role that they're given. And he was a role model. Um, and I know the people here who had a chance to work with him or listen to his homilies, um, his daily life, uh, you could see the joy he brought to what he did. Uh, and he brought that same joy to our family. He loved to laugh. <laughs> uh, he loved giving my father a hard time, uh, as he deserved. Uh, uh, but. Most of all, I think he was a person where the job, the calling, really came together and uh, we're all so much richer because of that. And very finally, the last thing is, the story of Uncle Joe is really the story of four brothers. Sorry. Four brothers and their grandmother. 
uh, who raised them. Uh, and my father is the last of them, and he's going to say a few words. I thought he was a less of a speaker, but he's more than I am. <laughs> I've come to say just thank you. It's tough to say goodbye. I'm usually the big mouth, never stop talking. Most of the time got in trouble. That's why Joe had a steady job. <laughs> and he owed me a hundred bucks before he died. <laughs> I don't know, he was talking about taking the money out of the cool of the kitty or something. I don't know what he was talking about. But, you know, to keep it straight, my brother Joe and my brother Mickey and my brother John were great brothers. <coughs> great brothers. We were raised by a woman who couldn't read or write. She had a ton of kids, and she made sure that we did the right thing at the right time. And I just want to say thank you to every, each and every one of you. I miss them, I hope. <coughs> Uh, usually I don't have tongue-tiedness. I, I guess I've been burying people for a long time, and this is probably the toughest one. I want to say, I want to say thanks, and God bless you all. Entrance song can be found on page three of your worship aids anthem.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. Amen. Cardinal Dolan has asked me to say hello to all of you and a special greeting and thanks to the Murphy family for the great gift of Joe Murphy, an extraordinary priest who thought outside the lines and spaces and built the kingdom of God among us with the goodness of his priesthood, his love, his joy. He was Pope Francis before anybody ever heard of Pope Francis. <laughs> Taking the church out into the streets, into the neighborhoods, to folks all over the place. So today we celebrate his life and we thank you all for coming. And might I ask this, when we reflect on his life, could we ask the Lord to give us just a bit of that spirit that fills Monsignor Joe Murphy, that you and I can go forth and bring order out of the chaos of our modern times. Now to prepare ourselves to pray this mass together, let us pause for a moment, call to mind our sins, and ask our good and gracious God for pardon and for peace. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. We came to call sinners. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that the soul of Monsignor Joseph P. Murphy, your servant and priest, whom you honored with sacred office while he lived in this world, may exult forever in the glorious home of heaven through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Charlotte Murphy will proclaim for us the first reading. A reading from the book of Job. Job answered and said, Oh, would that my words were written down, would that they were inscribed in a record, that with an iron chisel and with lead, they were cut in the rock forever. But as far from me, I know that my vindicator lives and that he will, last, will, that he will at last stand forth upon the dust, whom I my, myself shall see, my own eyes, not another's, shall behold him, and from my flesh I shall see God. My inmost being is consumed with longing. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Anna Cronin for the second reading. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Beloved, I am already being poured out like a libation, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have competed well, I have finished the race, and I have kept the faith. And, and from, from now on, the crown of righteousness awaits me, which the Lord, the just judge, will award to me on that day and not only to me, but to all who have longed for his appearance. The word of the Lord. Thank you to God. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory Glory to you, Lord. Lord. When Jesus had spoken these things, he lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son that your Son may glorify you. For you granted him authority over all people, so that he may give eternal life to all those you have given him. Now this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I have revealed your name to those you have given me out of the world. They were yours, you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. 
Now they know that everything you have given me comes from you, for I have given them the words you gave me, and they have received them. They knew with certainty that I came from you, and they believed that you sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. Through the word holy gospel may my sins be wiped away thank you okay okay now you can give me the hat thank you all right you, you, you're doing fine don't worry about it we gather this morning to celebrate the life of monsignor joseph p murphy all his family, friends, loved ones, and parishioners of St. Clair's raise our alleluias to God for the gift of this loving man and his priesthood. The death of a priest is unlike the death of any other person. We feel it differently and deeply. We sense that in losing him, we have lost not only one particular man, but also this man's unique way of revealing God to us. Over a year ago now, in the midst of the COVID crisis, a voice that spoke of God was silenced. Hands so often raised in blessing were put to rest. Since a priest is one who takes on the person of Christ, his taking leave of us is somehow a loss in our very way of communicating with the Lord. No one will ever again exemplify Jesus for us in the unique way that Monsignor Murphy was able to do for 66 years altogether as a priest and for 23 of those years with us here at St. Clair's. The Lord Jesus himself described that special relationship which he would enjoy with his priests when at the Last Supper he uttered the words, of his own priestly prayer, saying, Father, I pray for those you have given me. Keep them in your name. They are not of the world. Sanctify them in truth. May the love with which you loved me be in them, and I in them. It was this priestly confirmation to Christ which guided and shaped the life of Monsignor Joseph Murphy. It would indeed be difficult to conceive of the personality of Joe Murphy apart from the priesthood. Always diligent, dignified, courteous, sensitive, and kind, he was a priest to the core. But what I think he wanted most of all in life was to share his priesthood with the people he would shepherd over the years. And that would never be more true than throughout his years here at St. Clair's. On the 29th of June in 2008, he celebrated with you his last Mass here as pastor. At that Mass, he delivered a stirring homily, summing up what he took to be his most sacred duty as an ordained priest of Jesus Christ. And that was to challenge his parishioners to assume both the rights and the duties conferred upon them in virtue of their common baptism. He quoted the dogmatic constitution on the Church Lumen Gentium from the Second Vatican Council, quote, though they differ essentially and not only in degree, the common priesthood of the faithful and the ministerial or hierarchical priesthood are nonetheless ordered one to another. Each in its own proper way shares in the one priesthood of Christ. End of quote. This is what he wanted his parishioners to know that all baptized Catholics are priests inasmuch as they have been commissioned by the Lord to pour out their lives in humble service to one another. How would Monsignor Murphy create the possibility for this mandate to be lived by his parishioners here in the Great Kill section of Staten Island, New York? He would do so first by recognizing his own need for the strength and grace of Christ in his life and then by identifying with the weaknesses and deficiencies of the people he shepherded. 
learning from their example of courage in the midst of tremendous daily challenges, heartaches, and sufferings. In this way, he lived out the motto of his priestly ministry. In fact, if he were to have a coat of arms, that motto would probably be emblazoned on its crest. He said, quote, we must meet the people where they're at. Pope Francis has the same philosophy of priesthood. He calls it a priesthood of accompaniment, journeying with the people. Monsignor Murphy said that when he was 75 years old, after having been at St. Clair's Parish for 19 years, he seriously contemplated retirement. He thought that perhaps his time of journeying, his time of accompanying people along the way of holiness, was coming to an end. However, during a trip to Celtic Ireland that summer, along with Gail LaForge and Bobby Bulger, he had a transformative spiritual experience alongside a beautiful lake in Glendalough, where he heard God telling him that it would be okay to sign up for another four more years as pastor after the normal retirement age. So that his last year here as pastor would ultimately come in 2008 at the age of 79. That year he finally acceded to retirement. But he never really wanted to leave home. So after a stint in residence at Farrell High School, he ultimately took up retirement residence here in the parish for a couple of years. Only going to the priest's retirement home up in the Bronx when it was absolutely necessary for his proper care. Ultimately, he contracted COVID, beat it, and then succumbed to the weariness imposed by the journey of a priestly life of 66 years, a little over a year ago on May 16th, 2020, at the age of 91. But he did have a priesthood before St. Clair's. For 15 years prior to coming here in 1985, he was Chancellor of the Archdiocese of New York under the saintly Cardinal Cook and the feisty Cardinal O'Connor. Long before that, he had studied at the Catholic University of America in Washington, D.C. from 1954 to 1956, where he received his doctoral degree in canon law while serving summers at St. Patrick's Church in Yorktown Heights. Then as parochial vicar at St. Joseph's Church in Croton Falls from 1957 to 1959. And at St. Thomas More Church in Manhattan from 1959 to 1960. Then from 1960 to 1971, he was a vice chancellor and a finance officer for the archdiocese. All this learning and experience held him in good stead to be appointed in 1985 to pastor the largest parish in the Archdiocese of New York, which stood at some 6,000 registered families and which one senior would in time increase to over 7,000. Of all these assignments, however, St. Clair's was home. I remember him saying to me back in 1983, or excuse me, 1993, when I finished my first hitch here at St. Clair's, Art, he said, remember, this is always your home. He could say that because it was definitely home to him. Over the course of those 23 years here at his home, Joe Murphy did something very special. You will read of it in our parish histories, and you will hear of it from long-standing and long-active parishioners who also call this place home. Because of its size, Monsignor knew that to properly pastor its people and to lead St. Clair School successfully into the third Christian millennium, he would have to truly engage the laity of the parish in positions of parish leadership. In those days, which saw the beginning of the serious priestly vocation shortage, which continues to this day, Monsignor knew that he would increasingly have to depend upon the laity for the efficient running of the parish. And to him, efficient running meant more than help with finances and office management. Even more importantly, it meant real pastoral partnership with lay ministers who would reach out to their brothers and sisters in loving ecclesial service. In this way, Joe Murphy knew they would be able to realize the priestly nature of the baptism 
that each had received. Monsignor Murphy was way, way ahead of his time in knowing that parishioners were meant for much more than just to pay, pray, and obey. Indeed, the ideal Catholic parishioner of the 20th and 21st century was and is meant to take ownership of all that it means to be parish, to help lead in worship and service, and to teach the faith with both words and the example of their lives. Without all this far-sighted formation having taken place under Monsignor's watchful and loving guidance, the parish would never have been able to respond in the magnificent way it did to the tragedies of 9-11 and later Hurricane Sandy under the leadership of his successor and dear friend, Father Richard. In fact, it was Father Richard whom Monsignor Murphy wanted to preach his funeral homily. But in the mystery of God's ways, this was just not meant to be. And the parish was forced to sacrifice two shepherds at nearly the same time and due to the nearly same tragic circumstances of the 15 months we've all just passed through. Some people talk about holiness as being able to do ordinary things extraordinarily well. This was not true of Joe Murphy, who here, most of all, did extraordinary things extraordinarily well. He was a visionary. He was a leader. He was a pastor. He was a dear, dear friend to so many. He was indeed a holy man, and not precisely because he was able so well to lead us to God. We are sure that he is now enjoying all the rewards of his earthly efforts. We are sure that he is now looking down upon us with a wide smile and the satisfaction of knowing that he accomplished in his life the will of the Heavenly Father. God bless you. stand for the prayer of the faithful, I would ask the Reverend Mary Hansen to come forward to lead us in the general intercessions. Confident that Monsignor Murphy, who longed to see God in the flesh, is indeed seeing God face to face. We offer our prayers for his eternal rest and for ourselves as we remember him. For Pope Francis, Cardinal Dolan, Bishop O'Hara, all priests, bishops, deacons, religious, and ministers of God's word, that Christ the eternal high priest may speak and act through them in their ministry. Let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, O Lord. Yeah, she'll sing, let us pray to the Lord. She'll sing okay. it. For world leaders, that they may be guided by the Holy Spirit to work together to ensure that all peoples, especially those from poor nations, have access to the health care needed to combat COVID-19. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, O Lord. For Monsignor Murphy, whom we entrusted into the loving care of God, that he may be welcomed into God's heavenly home, where he will know true and eternal peace and happiness. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, O Lord. For our brother, who ran a good race, serving the church fervently as a priest for 66 years, May, be he, may he be awarded the crown of righteousness by his participation in the heavenly liturgy. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, O Lord. For all who have died as a result of COVID-19 and for the deceased victims of gun violence, war, famine, 
racism, and injustice, that all may be gathered in God's eternal kingdom and experience true love. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, O Lord. For the family and friends of Monsignor Murphy, who are still mourning his passing, especially his brother Tom, that they may be consoled in their faith and in the living God. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, O Lord. For our St. Clair's Parish, Monsignor's beloved church family, that as we remember and mourn him, his words and examples of kindness, inclusivity, openness to grow beyond our comfort zone, meeting people where they are and treating them with utmost respect and love as fellow pilgrims on the long journey. And for the men and women in recovery who miss Monsignor Murphy's friendship and support. And for the over 200 needy children of the Amazing Kids connection that he loved and supported, Monsignor, like Jesus, cared for these little ones quietly for many years. The outreach goes on in his name. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, O Lord. For the deceased family and friends of Monsignor Murphy, his beloved grandma, Anne O'Dowd, his brothers, Timothy and John Murphy, his sister-in-law, Arlene Murphy, his friends, Father Richard, Kathy Feeks, that together with him, they may be united in the communion of saints and dwell in the Lord's own house. Amen. Let us pray to the Lord. Hear us, O Lord. Together, we pray the serenity prayer. This God. prayer meant so much to Monsignor Murphy and is on the list of things he requested for his Mass. This prayer can be found on page six of your worship aid and so we pray together. God, grant me serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and wisdom to know the difference through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our song at the preparation of the gifts can be found on page seven, St. Patrick's Breastplate.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of our hands, the praise and glory of the King, for our one with all the Holy Church. Amen. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that through these holy mysteries, Joseph P. Murphy, your servant and priest, may behold with clarity forever what he faithfully ministered here through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be considered by the promise, might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. created rightly gives you praise for through your son our Lord Jesus Christ by the power and working of the Holy Spirit you give life to all things and make them holy and you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the Sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name therefore O Lord we humbly implore you by the same spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it for this 
is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Clair and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. This sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. Your servant Francis, our Pope, and Timothy, our Bishop, and John, our assistant Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family in whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Through Christ our Lord, through whom we bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
at the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Gracious and grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us show each other with social distancing of earth the sign of peace. Peace be with you. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. Amen. As it is now time for communion, we will have three communion stations, two in the center aisle, so come up please side by side, and one on this side of the church. Uh, if you wish to come up and receive a blessing but not receive communion, as an indication to the minister, simply hold your hands over your chest in this fashion. Thank you.
final word of personal reflection will be offered by parishioner Michael Cristiano. Your Excellency, Reverend Clergy, the Murphy family, the Bolger family, and my brothers and sisters in Christ. I came to St. Clair 44 years ago but the parish I found is not the parish that's here today. There was a communion rail here with kneelers. Some of you remember that. Communion was only received on the tongue. There were no female altar service, no female lectors, and no Eucharistic ministers. It was kind of like our version of the Dark Ages. The pastor retired, and Monsignor Murphy came, and I held my breath. Is it going to be more the same, or will it be a, a breath of fresh air? Monsignor Murphy wasn't a breath of fresh air. He was a hurricane. <laughs> he came and made this parish inclusive for every man, woman, and child. He would come to know most parishioners by their first name, which was a blessing and a curse for me. I learned that it was impossible to say no to Monsignor Murphy, or as I called him behind his back, the Murph. Michael, could you do me a favor? And any time I heard those words, I knew I was in for it. Could you be a member of the new parish council? Uh, okay. Uh, there's a young boy in the parish that needs to be patterned several times a week. Could you help out? Uh, okay. There's several people in the parish who need the Eucharist to be brought to them. Can you help out? Uh, okay. And that went on and on and on. If he knew that somebody was in need, he took care of it. And he took care of it right away. He found out about my ministry to the homeless. And he called me to the rectory. Now, anytime somebody gets called to the rectory, 
it's a little scary. Not with Monsignor Murphy. He said to me, I am humbled by your work. He was humbled by my work. I laughed so hard I almost cried. He gave to me on a number of occasions money from his own pocket to buy bread and coal cuts to feed the homeless. With Janet Kelly and the youth group on Thanksgiving and Christmas, we put together 2,000 sandwiches and on Christmas, hats, gloves, and socks. Monsignor miraculously found us a school bus for free, and we traveled into the city. Low Manhattan, where my guys were, and down the Bowery to the single-room single occupancy hotels, where the children of this parish had a chance to meet Jesus in the streets. When we returned, we made a stop at, at the uh, Staten Island Ferry and had breakfast, compliments of Monsignor Murphy. At the end of the movie, Saving Pri Private Ryan, the elderly Private Ryan is at the grave of Captain John Miller, the man who saved his life. He falls to his knees, and his wife rushes to him, and he says to her, tell me I've led a good life. She says, you have. He says, tell me I'm a good man. And she says, you are. Monsignor, you led a good life. And you were a good man and a better priest. <clears throat> you are forever a priest in the order of Melchizedek. I used to pray for you. Now I pray to you. We miss you and we love you. Let us pray. Having received the sacrament of salvation, we implore your kindness, O God, for Monsignor Joseph Murphy, your servant and priest, that as you made him a steward of your mysteries on earth, so you may bring him to be nourished by their truth and reality as unveiled in heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. First of all, the hat and then the bat. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you. The Lord be with you. With Bow down now for the blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with kindness and grant you his peace. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come upon you and remain with you forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord. May he rest in peace. Amen. And may his soul and the souls of all the faithful departed to the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. Amen. Go forth in peace and love to serve the Lord. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to God.
that one table right there.
Thank you. 